And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. This is a channel where we talk about anything related to comic books, like new releases, stories, writers, artists, or video games based on comic books. In today's video, I'm going to show you the first volume of the Venom Epic Collection, which is called Symbiosis. See Venomaniacs? I told you that you'd get your video. With no further ado, let's start. Oh, hello there. Uh, well, today's video is going to be a bit different than the previous ones. Uh, I know that just seeing the cover of a paperback doesn't help, uh, and I opened the camera so that you can get a better look uh, of the whole thing. In my first video, I talked about the Marvel Epic Collections, so I thought that I could show you how one looks like. Here I have my copy of the first volume of the Venom Epic Collection. It is called Symbiosis, as we can see from here. Uh, and it covers the years uh, 1984 to 1992. If you have watched my video about the Epic Collections, you'd know what they are, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to explain it very quickly. Uh, this is part of a collection of trade paperbacks that feature every comic book a certain character has ever appeared in. This one, as you can see, is about Venom. It's Venom's first volume, but there are two more. Okay, let's get into the details. Uh, this one has 472 pages, and that's why, as you can see, it's very thick. And now you're probably thinking, how the heck am I gonna read this thing? Uh, well, don't worry, it's made in a way that can be easily read. I had no problems reading it, and I don't think that you will have any. Uh, the front cover is drawn by Eric Larson and Ron Emberlin. And this was originally used for Amazing Spider-Man issue 347, which I think is also included in this volume. Somewhere around... Uh, yep, here it is. This is it. Okay, I hadn't noticed it until I started making the video, but if you look very, very carefully, uh, the front cover is a bit smaller than the rest of the pages, same goes for the back cover, but I don't think this is a huge issue, I mean, I hadn't even noticed it until now, and it's like, this is like only a millimeter uh, smaller than the rest of the pages, so yeah, it's nothing to be worried about. Anyways, here is the Epic Collection log on the top, of course, and also on the spine, since it is part of the Marvel Epic Collections. And here on the bottom we have uh, the, the volume's name, which is Symbiosis, and the creative team. Actually, this is only a part of the creative team. Um, the rest of the rest of it is here. Yeah, the rest of it is here. Now let's take a look at the spine, shall we? It is made in such a way so that it's similar to the other epic collections, of course. Uh, so yeah, here we have the Epic Collection logo, the hero's name, the title, and a small image of Venom, which is actually the cover, but smaller. And now I think we can go to the back cover. Venom goes epic! Okay, this is uh, also drawn by Eric Larson. Wow, they must really love Eric Larson. Can you blame them though? No, you can't. And this one is from The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 332, which should be uh, somewhere back. It should be... Yep, here it is. It's here. And here we have a description of what we are about to read. And as, we, as I said earlier, this is volume 1, and it collects uh, all the stories Venom has ever appeared in uh, from the year 1984 to 1992. And this volume collects Amazing Spider-Man 258, 300, 315 to 317, 332 to 333, and 346 to 347. It also includes Web of Spider-Man number 1, Avengers Death Rap the Vault, Darkhawk 13214 and material from Amazing Spider-Man 388 and Annual 2526 
and the web of Spider-Man Annual 7 and 8, and Spectacular Spider-Man Annual number 12. Wow, that's quite a lot of stuff to read, right? Uh, when I first got this, I finished it in two days. It was so good that I couldn't stop reading, even though it's 400 plus pages. Now I think it's time to take a look on how it looks inside. Here we have a list of all the other epic collections, which actually continues here. Yeah, there are quite a lot of epic collections. Here we have the creative team and uh, the table of contents. Now let me say that the paper's quality is very good. They have used thin and not very glossy paper. Which is actually very nice. If it was uh, really glossy, then it will feel more, more modern. But we don't want modern here. We want to feel how we would feel if we were really reading the comics from the 80s and the 90s. And this is exactly what I felt while reading this. Now, if we go all the way to page 447, we can take a look at all the extras. Here are some of Mike Zek's sketches for Spider-Man's black costume. And, fun fact, the idea of Spider-Man wearing this was actually from a fan who sent a letter to Marvel saying that it would be cool if Spider-Man wore a black suit that would enhance his powers. And then we have some sketches of Venom, uh, some cover arts, and here we have an introduction to the Venom Returns trade paperback by Danny Fingeroth. Uh, some more covers. And finally, an afterword by Ralph Macchio. Uh, no, not the Karate Kid. Not that Ralph Macchio. Uh, this Ralph Macchio is a comic book editor and writer. And now that you got a taste of how it looks like, let's talk about the stories. This volume starts with two pages from Secret Wars, number 8. Uh, this is actually the first appearance of the symbiote. When Spider-Man was in the battle world and... Uh, his suit was damaged. He went to a machine that could fix it, but he used the wrong machine and at least it seemed good that it would later be known as Venom. Here we have the story where Peter learned that his suit is alive, so he gets rid of it. This is an iconic scene. It was also in Spider-Man 3, the movie with Tobey Maguire. Uh, the, however, um, the Simgood finds a new host, who is Eddie Brock, of course, and together they become the monstrous Venom. Venom actually beats Spider-Man in their first battle, but in the end, uh, Peter manages to defeat him. And Venom actually became so popular that David Michelinie, uh, the writer of Spider-Man back then, uh, tried to use him in uh, the magazine as much as he could. After some time, uh, Eddie was sent in a prison for superhumans, uh, which is called The Vault. And he tried to escape and also freed some of the other prisoners, but the Avengers managed to stop all of them. And then, of course, he escaped from prison again and tried to kill Spider-Man again. And this kept going for quite some time until his symbiote uh, was killed by Styx. Uh, he is a man who can kill people by just uh, touching them. Uh, so, after the death of his symbiote, Eddie went to a normal prison. But it turned out that the symbiote was still alive and bonded with Eddie again. Of course, Venom tried to kill Spider Man again. To do so, Venom took Spider Man to a deserted island 
where Spidey faked his own death so that Venom could leave him alone. Eddie was finally happy, since he really believed that Spider-Man was dead and decided to spend the rest of his days in the island. And then we have uh, Venom's first solo adventure. That is said even before uh, the, Amazing Spider -Man, the Amazing Spider Man issue 300. Venom also appeared in uh, two issues of Dark Hawk. As I said, he was very popular back then. Uh, but I think that Dark Hawk. Uh, uh, was written by Danny Fingeroth. Yeah, Danny Fingeroth. So, well, no wonder that uh, Venom appeared again, since Danny Fingeroth was this, was the same person that wrote uh, Avengers: Death Trap: The Vault. And here we have some other Venom solo adventures in the Marvel timeline. This is actually Venom's first adventure. And all these events are set before The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 300. And this is where this volume ends, since we, after this story, we have the extras. Generally, in most of the stories in this volume, Venom appears to be a villain, a really bad guy. But in some parts, we can see that uh, Venom uh, cares about the innocents. He's not like the other villains that kill people without even thinking twice. Venom only hates those who hurt him. Anyways, this volume has amazing stories, but with pencilers like uh, McFarlane and Larson and writers like Michelin and Fingeroth, you wouldn't expect any less, of course. He even has one of my personal favorites. Which is Amazing Spider-Man issue 315 to 317. Here it is. And the art is truly astonishing and Venom is deadlier than ever. Venom's symbiosis is a masterpiece. It's really well made and has tons of material. There isn't a single bad story, and it has some pretty nice extras. This is clearly the best gift for a Venom fan or someone that wants to read to learn the history of Venom, since it features every single appearance of Venom, even the ones that are only two pages long. I highly recommend it, and if I had to rate it, I would put 5 out of 5. Great writing, great art, and great for your collection. Well guys, this was today's video. This was something I wanted to do for a long time because I absolutely love this certain book and I'm sure you'd love it too if you got it. It's definitely one of the best Marvel epics and it's great for your collection. So, until the next time, goodbye true believers!